So today we're going to look at uh, some cabling grounding shielding and in particular the shielding for the feedback cable. Uh, why do we get count drift? Why do we have a noisy encoder? Why do we get a CRC fault? And uh, what is the path for the PWM noise at the motor coil to ground? So what I've done here <clears throat> is uh, I busted open the motor to take a look at the shield to see if it's connected to the frame of the motor. And I see that someone's gone to a lot of trouble to connect the shield to the frame of the motor. There's an extra hole tap, the screw, the wire feeds back up and loops back down again, all to connect the shield to the case of the motor. Uh, the feedback shield, by the way, uh, this is a Heidenhain NDAT 2.2 encoder, and there's a shield here, and it's connected to the motor case, so presumably the motor case finds a path to earth back through the uh, the motor power wires. So you got UVW and earth and a shield, and that's connected to the drive, which the case is connected to earth. The earth protective earth is coming into the drive. Um, so on my feedback shield, on my feedback cable, I'm just measuring the noise on the shield uh, with respect to the case, which goes to earth. So that's my reference uh, for the for the signal. And, you know, when the drive is disabled, uh, hey, look at that. There's no noise. Right. If you're failing emissions because of the, the amplifier and the motor, uh, you know, you could turn the power off. Right. Or just disable the PWM and and the noise should look much better. So. So most of the noise comes from the uh, PWM switching uh, from the Miller capacitance from the coil to the case of the motor. So that we got to make sure the case has a good path to earth and, and not just through the, the feedback shield. So of course, uh, in a real system, we're going to enable the drive and uh, we will start to see some, uh, some PWM uh, right now, I've got the shield, uh, uh, I have isolation from the motor case uh, to, to the feedback shield. And I, I still see some, some counts of uh, noise counts here, but more importantly, I, at, a, at a one volt uh, scale, I see, you know, a plus or minus a volt of noise that's this at the switching edge you get a little ring and that that would be throughout <clears throat> throughout the system uh, based on our you know good cabling grounding and shielding this will be minimized of course um, but i just want to show what happens when the case of the motor uh, is connected to uh, the shield. So right now it's isolated, right? So the noise is just coming from the rest of the system here. Um, but when I connect the, the case to the now, if I don't have a good path uh, for Earth for the motor case, then I see one, two, three, plus or minus three volts of noise measured on the shield. So that's a lot of noise to be injecting into your feedback signals that would probably cause uh, more error in the feedback, but also make it more susceptible to, um, uh, to CRC faults with an absolute encoder. I mean, there's no sine, cosine, or incremental encoder here, this, this is an absolute end at 2.2 encoder. So it's just clocking the data out. Um, so uh, the, the, the feedback device is getting a good shield uh, from the motor case when we, when we connect it to earth. Um, so I'll take a look at connecting the, the motor case to earth. Of course, one way is is through the cable. Okay, you see a maybe a slight change in the in the noise there. Um, so to bring the trigger down a little bit to capture it. So now uh, now that I've connected the case of the motor to the to earth.
through the motor power wires, uh, the, the noise gets a little better. There's less of it to go down the shield there. It's still several volts worth of, of noise. Uh, that's about two and a half uh, volts there. So, so now that I've given the noise a better path, uh, then less of it gets to the shield. But the, the point is, um, the noise will get to the shield if you connect the shield to the case of the motor. Even if most of the electrons want to go down this, this direction, some will still go down that way. Which brings up another point. There's uh, mounting flanges on the motor so that you bolt your motor to the frame of your machine. And presumably, the frame of your machine is connected to the, uh, the drive, you know, and so there's an earth. So there's a return path for the electron. So uh, a, a thin little wire doesn't make a good path to earth, but a nice solid bolt and a large hunk of metal does make a good path to earth. So then most electrons will, will go down that path rather than this path or that path. Um, another thing I wanted to point out in uh, CME is we have some different options for switching techniques. Uh, bus clamping and not bus clamping. Um, in the in the case of not having a good earth, so I'm going to disconnect the the motor case from earth. You can see a little bit more noise here with the bus clamping. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, with turning the bus clamping off. So. Uh, this is a uh, center weighted modulation technique. So when we're at zero, we're constantly uh, trying to correct the, the pulse width to, to be at zero. That's a little more noisy, okay? And, and, and then there's uh, bus clamping. So it really depends on your application, which one's better. But this is just showing with bad cabling grounding shielding. Uh, you can see the effect of, you know, plus or minus uh, 20 counts of error, and I'm just holding position. And then I go and I, I make sure there's a good path to earth for the motor case, and we're back down to the to normal again. So, yeah, uh, a good path to earth is important. All cases must find a path to earth. All shields must find a path to earth. And so we'll take a quick peek at... Uh, What's going on here? You know, there's a servo drive and then there's a motor case with the coil has a Miller capacitance to the case and the case of the motor should find a path to earth. But some of it finds its way back down through the shield, which also has capacitance. So based on your rise time, you can get a little circulating ring. But uh, this is what Charlie Roman said. He said, "Not don't use a thin little wire for a path to earth. Use a nice thick copper braid. So bolt that motor to the frame. Uh, there's a paper, a white paper on this, IEEE, uh, eetimes.com, uh, minimizing servo amplifier source noise. And you can look for crumlish and noise. Okay, and so the, the white paper should pop up for that. Um, also want to talk about uh, what, the, what the feedback companies say, you know, NDAC guys, I never argue with them. They're absolutely right. And same thing with Renishaw. You know, uh, you can see that they show the read head or the feedback device uh, case of this finds a path to Earth. The, the electron customer electronics finds a path to Earth. I mean, these these guys aren't talking about a motor you know, or a servo drive, just like something that reads an encoder, right? So outer shield, you know, finds a path to earth, but look at, they got an inner shield here too. That's cool. And so they pass the inner shield through and isolate it from earth. And it goes uh, directly in the inner shield with respect to the zero volts, which is the power for the five volts, which is presumably the same ground for your, your amplifiers that are receiving the signal. So not necessarily connected to Earth. Uh, there is, in some of their interfaces, they show a capacitive coupling, so sort of a weak path.
for high frequency noise to earth, that's, that's fine. Um, but the question is, you know, do I connect the shield to the case of the motor? Right. Uh, so that's a good question. There's a, always a debate about that. So nobody's right or nobody's wrong, I guess, as long as it works. But let's take a look and see what a motor company says about this. Um, here's a uh, motor manufacturer that has a, a shield and they show it connected to earth at the drive, not at, not at the encoder. So yeah, of course the encoder has a shield and that's connected to the motor case, but uh, you know, how does the case of the motor find a path to earth? How does the shield find a path to earth? Well, it's connected to the drive and they're not showing it. Can, I mean, maybe it is, right? Don't get me wrong. Some people do that and then they have noise. Right, so just be careful when you, you when you connect it. Make sure your signals are good. But the, the normal path for the noise at the motor case would be directly bolted to the frame, or it could find its way through a fourth wire, which is the yellow uh, green wire, back to earth. Um, you know, this is the motor power wires UVW, and there's a shield on that, and that also finds a path to earth. So just you know, check with the motor manufacturer make sure they know what they're doing. Um, you know, if you have a, a CRC fault or some noise, uh, good cabling, grounding, shielding should get rid of it. Uh, um, I like to disconnect the feedback shield from the case of the motor, because I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't want the noise traveling down my feedback cable, injecting into my feedback signals uh, for the whole length of travel of of the cable and another good point would be to make sure that the uh the feedback cable was continuous uh from one end to the other 